This is your fair warning. If you remember way back when we split the herd, Sam had some, Udo had the others. If you haven't already commented, drop a comment in or private message lee.gilbert1 on Instagram and give us your thoughts for Udo's rename. Udo has been working his socks off. He's been working up a sweat. He is going to town in here and serving pretty much everything. Good morning, this week is part two of On The Farm video. I've not been around because I've been working away, so Mark, Ryan and Jess have had to sort everything out with Big Rob as well. He's been a massive help out there doing the tedding and doing some of the mowing, so that has been fantastic. Thank you, Rob. Bales wise, at the minute we had that mither that we had last year with bales stored out on that field. In the summer it seemed a fantastic idea, it was really hard standing up in this corner, albeit a grass field. I thought that we could sneak through the edge and just pick them out in the winter months when it got a bit wetter, but being the highest part of the field I didn't think it would retain a great deal of water and it'd stand up. That obviously didn't happen. Telehandler was bellying out on a daily basis, we were really struggling to get the bales out of there, so this time we've had to put them on this front yard. That has caused some issues because it is slowly but surely reducing the width of the front yard. So when we've got the feed wagons now coming in to fill the bins for the pigs or whether it be the cattle feed or pigs in and out, whatever it may be, it's now becoming very tight. We have now stacked this as much as we can really put on here without making it too tight. And we've obviously got further grass to go and bale yet. So. Where I'm gonna put that on a hard standing area, I don't know. It's just leading me to believe that the farmstead is not big enough. So let's go onto the bottom yard and have a look. Before we do, quick look at the pigs. So pigs are now in, they've been in for three or four weeks now. They're looking really, really good. So I'm pleased with them. We've had a real good batch. Um, sheds wise, we have now put padlocks on all the doors. Now, Beforehand, we didn't have the padlocks and then we had some visitors, as you know. Apparently, if there's no locks on the doors, they can let themselves into the building and they're doing nothing wrong, apart from civil trespass, which is an absolute nuisance. So, we put locks on all the doors. One, if the lock is not on and they let themselves in and the dog hasn't eaten them and I haven't got to them first, I will then padlock them in the shed and let the pigs eat them. Can't say that. <laughs> So one now, if they break the padlock and get into the shed, that's then criminal. Now that puts it into a different category according to what the police have told me and therefore they can instantly make an arrest and we can prosecute. So that's why we've done it, albeit it is an absolute nuisance on a daily basis because you've got to unlock all the shed before you work in it to make sure nobody gets locked in. If, however, you were trespassing and there was a lock that wasn't on one of the doors, which wouldn't happen, but if it was and you let yourself in, just be aware if you haven't already been eaten by the dog or I haven't already gotten to you, I will lock you in the shed and I will just ring the police. So now on the bottom yard, we've got this obviously section where we come through between the natural and the attenuation pond. This with that yard on the right there into the building is the last bit that we've got a concrete down here. Before I do so, I've said before, I want to put this retaining wall with a handrail around it as well. So there's a bollard and a barrier that you can't physically walk or drive off into either of the ponds. Now the idea is, is that this area is concreted and we've got some storage then area for some of the bits and bobs that overflow from the machinery shed that's not yet finished or concreted either. But it does give us a nice big turning area. So at the minute, if I can get this cleared, we could stack some more bales on that front yard with a view that as long as we can get around the corner, the Arctics can turn around here, they can pull back out, they can fill the bins and then they can go out. So it's almost like a one-way system through the yard and then area here in which you can turn around. But as you can see at the minute, we've got bits and bobs of rubble that I need to crush ready to finish stoning up the yard. We've got sand for the builders that are doing all the brickwork. We've got all the bricks here. We've got everything stored. So until we get a little bit further along, which 
everybody's a little bit stalled by me now because I haven't had chance to concrete that floor in that building. The only other place that we've got, we have got down the side of the big straw shed here, but again, that is not concreted either. So that did cause us a few issues, albeit not as bad as the field, but it did cause us a few issues getting the bales out of there. So we've got a handful left in there and we've probably got about 150 bales down that side. There's probably about 300 bales over there. So 450 bales, I need at least 900 bales. So where on earth are we gonna put them? I don't know. I don't really wanna store bales here unless I really, really have to. Between the two buildings there, that is where we're gonna have a handling facility for the cattle and the sucklers as in the winter months when we are carving, which gives us an access to the field at the rear. Again, I don't wanna fall into the same trap of having to put bales out in the field and having the same problem of trying to get them out. It wasn't just the fact that the telehandler was bellied out in that field, it was the fact that all the crap we then traipsed through the yard, which went on all the tires of all the vehicles, all the way down my nice drive, that's got to stop because I want the place back to being pristine clean. And then the only thing left I've got to report on the farm is the addition of a new feed bin. So the feed bins that we went for with the pigs were from EB Equipment. However, we were running a bit short on time and Collinson's have done me a belting good deal and I'm chuffed to bits with the bin that we've had. The reason we've had the bin is for the cattle feed. Now we've been buying bagged feed, so we buy a pallet, at, well, we buy a number of pallets, should I say, at a time of pre-bagged feed. Then we will buy a ton bag from a different firm of like a blend as well. And that is what we're using to fatten our cattle. The bags are fantastic on the pallet because you can just pick a bag up and walk off with it, but they end up being quite expensive. The blend is cheaper, but it's a pain in the arse to get out of a ton bag. So it's very labour intensive on that front. So what we've done is we have gone for the Collinson's bin, we could put the feed in it and we have got a bag and chute on the bottom. So albeit a little bit more labour intensive than having to just pick a bag up off a pallet and walk off with it but not as labour intensive of trying to scratch it out of a bag where it's gone hard and you're breaking your bucket trying to get into it or your shovel. So this is working out to be really good. It's made a massive difference in terms of cost as well because now instead of having to go and fetch or having a number of pallets delivered, sat in the corner and needing to store them in a building as well, it then costs far less in terms of delivery fees than it would bring in two, three pallets at a time because we haven't got the shed space, believe it or not, to store 20 pallets of feed, whereas there's probably the equivalent of 20 pallets worth of feed in that bin. So for those of you that do not know, this tube here is what the driver, when he comes in with a wagon, hooks his tube up and blows the feed in. That tube there is the exhaust pipe, so as you're blowing material in, there needs to be the air to come back out. So that's what that is, that's exhausting the air out, that's blowing the feed in. That's then blown in. You can see we've got these series of sight glasses all the way up, which tells us exactly how much feed we've got. On the pig sheds, if you remember, I've mentioned before, we've had way cells put underneath the feet, so we know exactly how much feed we're using on a daily basis. It would have been nice to have done that here, but we haven't done it, one, because of cost, and two, because in a way, we're already measuring the weight of what we're using when we're using this bagging chute. So we will literally come along, we will put a bag underneath, we will discharge until the bag is full. Okay, you might weigh the first few bags when you very first start, but then you get a feel of how full the bag needs to be to be 20 kilo or 25 kilo. So that's how we're measuring it at the minute. It is a little bit time consuming, like I say, filling bags. And I think going forward, what we might do is we might get a small bucket for the telehandler and we can put the small bucket underneath. We can weigh so we know there's a mark then on the bucket in the telehandler. And then we've got the exact weight of feed that we're then feeding. Because then for the sheds here at this farm that are the modern sheds, we don't need to bag anything. It's only the sheds that we rent around the corner that we have to sort of ferry everything by hand through because the feed passage in the middle of the building is not wide enough to get a machine down. 
So well chuffed with this. Thank you to Collinsons and thank you very much for getting it to us as quickly as you did because although it took me a bit of an age to make a decision on it when I was weighing up the costs and whether it was worth doing or not, it definitely has been worth doing and they did turn it around very quickly for us. Okay, and finally we are coming to that time of year where we're thinking about straw. So we've got a little bit of straw left, which is just about gonna last us until harvest. And then obviously this will be filled back up. The shed up the top will need filling as well. Unfortunately for us, we use an immense amount of straw with the pigs and we do as well with the cattle. Now I'm slightly concerned because we missed the straw sale at the auction the other week, but rumor has it that straw price is actually fairly high. That's worrying for us because for this year we actually need twice as much as what we've had in previous years given the amount of cattle that we've had because I'd built up almost like a little bit of a stock over the years that's now run out as you can see we've got very little left so the next thing really is we need to double up what we ordered last year I don't know what to do there I don't know whether to have the same again and some people are saying that in the back end will be all right so given the prices are high that sort of led me to think what am I going to do do we double up and have it all now or do we wait to see if things are a bit cheaper at the back end now we have got options there because it's Fowler and Gill but we've got wagons running all over the country all the time so I have got the option to buy straw from Norwich from Yorkshire or wherever it may come from and bring it back in arctic load at a time back loading from when we deliver a building but my worry there is is that the people that we do the muck and straw swap with won't necessarily want that because they won't want the possibility of bringing black grass or any form of contamination onto their field when they have the muck from here so really got to weigh up what i'm going to do with that it's not that far away so i need to get my skates on but that's it for this week and i hope you've enjoyed it if you like what you've seen hit subscribe ring the bell and we're going to leave you with a monstrous on the farm montage boom <laughs>